Have you tried to expand your research? We're going to discuss here how you can expand your Oklahoma Friedman research. A question for you. What do you do after you've found your Oklahoma family on Dawes records? You know the records. You've documented the family. You found them on the final roll. You have the roll number. You found the family's enrollment card, and you were so excited to locate that. The application jacket, you were able to copy that as well. And as you know, many of those application jackets are full of pages, interviews, documents, birth affidavits before statehood. It's so much more. And there is the land allotment file, including plat maps, and you've even found the actual allotment map showing exactly where your ancestors allotted land was. So the next question is, is there any more to find on your family? Well, here are five suggestions to help you find so much more. Number one, study the publications that are already out there about life pre-Oklahoma, meaning pre-statehood, which we know occurred in 1907. Some of those publications are digital. Some of them are published books, journals, theses, dissertations, articles, so much, much more, much more. Study the community. Take a look at others who have lived nearby, those neighbors, individuals with whom your ancestors interacted frequently. You might find more about your family by studying some of those individuals. You also want to be able to identify the institutions in which they had contact, those churches, the schools where their children went and learned and the Masonic Lodges. So much more to find. It is imperative that you do include standard genealogy records in your family research and that you engage with the wider genealogy community. Now, publications about pre-Oklahoma life. I mentioned that some are online and a wonderful, wonderful online resource comes out of the University of Oklahoma, the Western History Collection. And within that collection, one in particular, the Indian Pioneer Papers. This collection consists of over 100 volumes, and I mean printed volumes, of interviews with people who were living in what became Oklahoma prior to statehood. The people being interviewed were Black, were white and were Native American as well. You might find, if not your own ancestor, you might find something about that community. You might find something about the county in which they lived. You might even learn some information about how they celebrated events, how they buried their dead, how they cooked their food, and so much more about their culture. The Indian Pioneer Papers, that is the collection that you want to explore. There are other publications that are not digital. There are the WPA Oklahoma Slave Narratives. This book is a very large book consisting of interviews that were actually conducted at the same time the Oklahoma Pioneer Papers were being compiled. But this was being done by the WPA. And many of you who research other states are familiar with the slave narratives. Well, there is a volume from Oklahoma as well. There are books that have been written by scholars. Many of us are familiar by the books written by Dr. Daniel Littlefield, Africans and Creeks, Africans and Seminoles, the Cherokee Freedmen, the Chickasaw Freedmen, and a book also written around that same time by Dr. Ruby Halliburton, Red Over Black, Black Slavery Among the Cherokee Indians. But there are other books as well. African-Americans and Native Americans in the Creek and Cherokee Nations, 
1830s to 1920s. This goes prior to the era of the Trail of Tears, the forced removal, all the way up to the early 20th century. Hannibal Johnson wrote a very poignant book called Apartheid in Indian Country, where he was looking very closely at what had happened in terms of the disenfranchisement of people formerly enslaved in those five tribes that took enslaved people with them to the West, to the territory. Cherokee, Choctaw, Muscogee Creek, Seminole as well, and Chickasaw Nations. Dr. Barbara Qualthamer has a very poignant book, Black Slaves, Indian Masters, and quite a bit can be learned about Choctaw Freedmen in that book. We learn about individuals who were on both sides of the law. You know, Indian Territory was one of the places where westward expansion was alive and well, along with the gunfighting and the outlaws and the marshals. And there were people who were freedmen who were on both sides of the law. Black, Red, and Deadly by Art Burton will certainly expose you to many of those individuals. One of the more significant books that came out in the last two years, Black Indians and Freedmen by Dr. Christina Dickerson Cousin. This is looking at the history of the AME Church, the African Methodist, uh, Methodist Episcopal Church in Indian Territory. Fascinating book. And what a surprise for me as a reader, I started reading about people whose families I've already researched. And I knew some of these names and was quite surprised to learn so much more and how many of even the women were active, vehement church women and helped to establish some of the earliest AME churches in Indian Territory. One of the men I had mentioned who was on the other side of the law, meaning one of those outlaws is Cherokee Bill. And this is a man who was a cowboy. He was an outlaw as well. He was a Cherokee freedman. And a biography about him, as well as others in the Cherokee Nation, one can learn by having that in your library. And I must take a moment to also mention a few books in which I've had a ha slight hand in producing. Okay, these are some books that I have written. But it is important that we take a look at books that individuals who descend from the five tribes and who are also studying and, and researching in depth. And uh, as you can see, a two volume set, Freeman of the Frontier Volumes 1 and 2, my earliest book, Black Indian Genealogy Research, which was updated in 2007, originally published in 1993. And most recent, recently, in 2023, 24 people got together and started sharing their stories that I had the honor to compile and to put together in the book, Oklahoma Freedmen of the Five Tribes. All of these books, of course, are available on Amazon. And an early journal, no longer in publication, Voices of Indian Territory, was a co-produced journal with both Terry Ligon and myself, really focusing on not just stories about individual families, but some documents coming from congressional records as well. Family Search has to be mentioned. FamilySearch.org.org is a site that is operated by the LDS Church. Well, what is significant is that there's some unique tribal records that one can find. And apart from using the site that many people use worldwide, to find census records and other types of uh, local, state, and county records. There's some unique Native American records. I use it quite frequently, and particularly if you're looking for records pertaining to the five tribes of Oklahoma, one only needs to go to the catalog and drill down to the keyword and then type simply the words Choctaw Nation Records. And in that collection, you will see that it will take you to over 90 reels of microfilm. Well, going down that page, which is a very large page that will open up, 
about seven eighths of the way down that page, you'll start to see some school records. As one can see at the top, Tuscaloosa Academy. That was a Freedman school established, the only boarding school established by the Choctaw Nation for formerly enslaved individuals, well, in particular, their children. As you see on the right, there's a camera with a key on it. That means you're locked out of seeing it if you're if you're trying to look at it from home. But if you go to a local family history center, if there's a Mormon church in your community, there's a family history center, most likely. You can use that facility for free and all of those will open up. And each one of those, those images, you will get over a thousand pages of records. In those school records, those neighborhood schools, find rosters of who some of the children were who attended these schools. And you learn about the individuals who were the teachers, who were the superintendents, or who were the local trustees. Fascinating. Here is an example. Coming out of Fort Coffey Neighborhood School in Scullyville, which was the northernmost county in the Choctaw Nation. And as you can see, had written at the type, colored school. But you look at the names of the children who were there. And this is just one sample page. There's so many other types of things. Some actually showing attendance, some showing grades, some showing letters, some showing business records pertaining to expenses, but amazing records pertaining to these Freedmen communities. Federal records, the census, standard genealogy record. Of course, many people use the census. And if you haven't found your family on a regular census, perhaps you've missed the special 1910 special inquiries relating to Indians. This is part of the 1910 federal census, and there is a separate category. And this is also this particular style of census record as opposed to 50 people on a page, 25 people per page at the top and at the bottom half, additional information about the people at the top of the page. I was surprised. I found my family in the 1900 census, which was the first federal census in Indian Territory. But at the bottom, I found even more information in terms of the actual blood composition um, in terms of what percentage, what percentage of Indian, and as the column says, what percentage of Negro. And uh, very fascinating to see that information. Of course, it's, is it scientific? Absolutely not. The census taker was the one making that judgment, but it's still interesting to find it nevertheless. There are additional favorites that I will urge you to take a look at. World War I draft cards sorted by state and then by county. Civil War records, both service and pension files of the United States Colored Troops as well as the Indian Home Guards. Criminal court records coming out of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Pre- and early statehood newspapers. You can find some digitized online from the Library of Congress, but you can find some fascinating articles also on the website newspapers.com. There are blogs that have been devoted to the Oklahoma Freedmen. The African Native American genealogy blog, Betty's List, which really talks about certain cases coming from the case equity case 7071. Betty Ligon was the head litigant, and Terry Ligon, who's a direct descendant of Betty, has studied this in depth and shares a lot of information coming from that particular case. Black and Red Journal, another fascinating site to take a look at, and Choctaw Freeman Legacy. All of those are blogs, so you do a Google search, put in the name of the blog, you should find a link to it. Anyway, these are things that I hope will be useful to you to help you expand your research. There's so much more to do. So take the time, get into some of those other record sets and expand your research. There's so much more to do, so much more to find, and so many more stories to tell. Thanks for watching.